So I ran an experiment today, one that I had contemplated for a while, and one which I'm going to continue elaborating on because the results were nice. Um, so my my car that I use for for most things is direct injected and over four decades old, which means that because it draws um, gases back from the crank into the intake, um, it is subject to the ports and the valves, the intake valves, uh, getting covered in crap from, you know, oil and whatever. <coughs> if it were carbureted or port injected, More or less wouldn't happen. It, it would certainly be a lot better because the fuel um, cleans things. But because it's direct injected, there's no fuel there to clean it. Right. So there's a little bit of a, a problem here if you run a direct injected, a direct injection engine for a long time, you're going to lose power because it's not going to be able to breathe correctly because it's all clogged up with this snot. So, I've been, you know, just in my head, like, like oh, it'd be nice to, like, maybe convert it to, to dual injection or something, right? So you can get the fuel in there and clean it. It would, it would it, direct injection has other benefits too, right? Like, you can... You get better power at the top end and some other things, right? Um, and then I realized, wait. You could also... Pull in fuel on one of the vacuum lines. There's, uh, there's several vacuum lines on the car that I don't connect to anything anymore, the things that have been re removed, that don't, right, so there's a few spare vacuum lines just sitting around that I can easily tap into, <coughs> and then I was like, okay, well, so wait, we can, basically we could carburate one of the vacuum lines, and it's not going to be enough to run the engine, it's not, but it might be enough to help clean, and maybe even enough to help with power. So pr what I did in the experiment, so I don't recommend this necessarily, is um, in a distant corner of the engine bay, and because it is an older car, the engine bay is vast, so you can get pretty far away from the engine, um, and this is for heat concerns. Um, pretty much uh, like drop in a mason jar with some gas in it and two lines. One of them goes to the bottom, and one of them is just tapped into the top, and the one that goes to the bottom just breathes in air, just breathes in atmosphere, and the one that's just tapped into the top, so it's wherever your, your fuel level is, it's not actually sucking fuel directly, it's, it's pulling vapors. Um, that one is connected to the vacuum line, and then on this the vacuum line, I put a petcock so I can turn it off or turn it on, right? So if it just works, if it just catastrophically fails in the first trial, I can just turn it off and, you know, okay. Um, so yeah, that works, actually. That works pretty nicely. Um, with the petcock open, the engine running, you get atmosphere, atmospheric air bubbling up through the, uh, through the fuel, it mixes very nicely, and then it comes through the vacuum line into the intake. And there is a very small, because it's just a vacuum line, um, very small diameter vacuum line. There, there's a very small um, performance increase. I can feel it driving, though. Um, she does not have to idle for nearly as long to warm up. 
or to be able to pull away. Uh, I can climb hills quite a bit better now. Um, acceleration is better. Still slow. It's still, you know, it's still a 40-year-old Volvo. But there's a marked improvement. <clears throat> but then there was something that I didn't anticipate, although I probably should have. I was worried about heat in the engine bay. Um, initially. And once I actually ran this thing for a little while, I drove around with it for a little while, and I stopped and opened the hood and checked it. My, my worries about the heat pretty much disappeared because, and as soon as I noticed, as soon as I touched the bottle, the jar, I, I knew why. I, I understood what was happening. It, it was cold. It was very cold. Because what we're doing is we're evaporating the gas, the gasoline. And that phase change takes away a lot of heat. It's very efficient at removing heat from the system. So even though it's actually just breathing in the engine bay uh, air, which is quite warm, the the jar of gasoline is very very cold so this this excited me i was like okay this is actually as long as you're pulling that gas through the vacuum line as long as that's happening i don't think there's too much risk because I mean, it's it's basically like a carburetor in a, in an engine anyway. You just have a larger volume of gas, but in a, a carburetor in a carbureted engine, you're not at much risk of it burning, like you know, exploding or whatever, because the way that the air is being drawn through it and the fact that it's cooling itself and you know, just the way that it works, there's not much real risk there. And you also have fuel lines and whatever next to the hot engine and Consider like a maybe a motorcycle where you have the fuel tank right on top of the engine. There's there's really not any substantial risk here. It's sort of a similar situation, right? We're drawing air through it. That's for one, that's preventing vapors from getting into the engine bay and you know being exposed to sparks and whatever, which is a good thing. But you're also you're <laughs> you're you're drawing this in, and that's cooling it down. So even though we're drawing in warm air, it's cooling quite effectively. Um, yeah, so it's... I think it's pretty safe. I wouldn't recommend using a glass mason jar like I did for my for, for my um, experiment, but I did... The area that it's in, it's it's lined very heavily with, with rubber. Um, I took some old uh, floor mats that were trashed the original floor mats um, and basically like three or four layers thick like lined this area so it's it's very soft and protective of of this glass jar um, still don't do this <laughs> don't do it this way um, but it occurred to me that with this valveless carburetor we could um, it's cooling so well, so effectively. And it's only, right now, it's only drawing about 2%-ish of the engine's fuel um, is coming through this. So, basically all of it is still coming through the fuel injection system. <clears throat> and it's it's still doing the same um, the same fuel economy, because the fuel injection system is detecting that there's this extra fuel that's coming through so it's it's re regulating um, the fuel that it pumps in to compensate right so it's it's pumping in slightly less fuel to make up for the fact that some fuel is coming in through the vacuum lines and I you know I am also aware like eventually it's gonna melt the vacuum lines because they're not designed to handle fuel and things like that like there are potential issues there I get it. 
but just for an experiment. It's such a small volume that just to just to see how it works, probably okay. Um, but yeah, so it occurred to me because it's it's cooling so effectively that you could possibly actually use this as an air conditioner. So if you if you built it in a right way, so it acts like a radiator that you can pass air across, right? So, you know, it's in like vertical uh, vertical tubes and you're pulling air through it and right so you're you're sucking the vapors out of the top of this little radiator thing and there's some fuel in the bottom of it and atmospheric air is allowed to uh, percolate through it from the bottom basically the same thing we just between the bottom and the top we put you know a row of or several rows of tubes make it a radiator that we pull air through you could very potential very possibly um get a decent air conditioner without a compressor without any sort of specific refrigerant you just use the fuel and use the fuel as the engine is using it take advantage of an effect that's already occurring in the engine, if, especially if you had a carbureted engine, it's basically this thing is a carburetor. So you can you can save a lot of weight. You're potentially seeing it, um, efficiency gains on the engine. You're certainly not seeing losses, and still get air conditioning. <laughs> It's promising enough that I'm gonna I'm gonna tinker with it. I I'm under absolutely no impression that it's going to be as effective as a compressor, um, air conditioner. You know, like the classic unit with refrigerant and all. Of it. You know, it's I I'm not expecting it to be as good as that. But if you could just use the fuel that you're running anyway and an effect that you can get by running it directly from running it to get at least modest air conditioning, that's interesting. So yeah, I'm going to be playing with that, I think.